Welcome back, Shack News, and uh, hope you're having a good E3 so far. I'm back here, it's Ozzy, it's Rakib, and uh, you know, we've been showing off games and we've been showing off demos for the entire day, but we're gonna do something a little bit different for the next uh, couple minutes. So we have our friends from Yacht Club Games here. We got uh, Sean Velasco and we got Nick Wozniak. Hi, and, I'm uh, Sean. You know what, we're just gonna kind of take Wozniak. a moment to reflect on the E3 that's been so far. First of all, gentlemen, what brings you out here? Uh, well, I would say we've got meetings and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So we got to come out to E3 and talk to everybody. Uh, uh, are you at liberty to discuss what those meetings are or about? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Top no, secret. No, of course. We could, we, uh, you know, we talk to lots of media and other companies, you know, like the QA company that we're talking to, uh, outside like business people and just kind of like coming down looking at the show floor t hanging out with people that we haven't seen in a long time yeah. we, we don't have much of an agenda honestly this time it, this is a pretty slow yeah, yeah. We're, I mean we're pretty local so we can just like come in and like see the show for ourselves yeah. so a lot of it's just been like walking around seeing what's what's out there seeing Mario seeing the, the, the games that we're excited about I mean yeah. like Mario is one that I'm definitely excited about so yeah this is interesting this is like the first uh, year in a while that you guys haven't really had uh, anything to show. I mean, you've showed Shovel Knight for years, and uh, of course there was uh, yeah. Plague of Shadows, Spectre of Torment that was in the works, but this time it's, you do have something in the works, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later, but for <laughs> yeah. but this is mainly just like you guys are just hanging out and just chilling and just checking out. What have you seen so far in terms yeah, of Yeah, very uh, low-key. So I, I, I played a little bit of Mario, and I think it feels really great. I love uh, Mario 64 and, and uh, to a lesser degree Sunshine, so it's like, it's, it's a nice like return to that form of Mario. Um, I haven't played a lot of other things. I saw Nino Kuni 2 looks cool. Um, I didn't, like the first game was kind of like, not super my thing, but they took away my, my two complaints. You finished it. I, I, yeah, I finished Nino Kuni, but it was like. I heard, uh, yeah, I heard that, that's a long game to sit, to, to, to play through. It, I heard it, it was long. Um, <laughs> but like, the things that I didn't like as much were like that, that side character you had that was like that weird. Trippy? Would, trippy? Is that what trippy. his name is? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's like, oh, he made I'm Drippy. Yeah, no, I, I didn't like that guy. Um, and I also didn't like that the enemies were so like small and contained, and like everything felt like not epic at all. But they showed off these two giant bosses well, that you're fighting, and there's a bunch of big men. I like Nino Kuni too. You whatever. Like <laughs> you know what I think is really nice is this booth. It looks so profesh. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. Like you've got some nice I mean, wood we made here. It looks like a shack for a reason. Yeah. Know? Exactly. Oh, I, it doesn't look like uh, a shack at all. It looks like it looks, like, it look, or it looks like a lodge. It, you know. It, exactly. You should call yourselves Lodge News. Where I used to go to Blues News. Is that the same thing as Shack News? Nah, not exactly. We got a bit, we got <laughs> a different kind of history big, than that. Do you guys have a big fight? Ah, uh, that. Is that what happened? <laughs> I like this sugar shack thing too. This is so cool. That I wish is I, back can everyone see all this stuff? Oh, there's like these cool paintings on the walls. It's like really, it's really neat. We're honoring our 21, uh, our 21 year history. Yeah, congratulations. Of, uh, yeah, I mean, oh, I remember you. looking. I remember looking at Shack News for like Counter Strike stuff a million yeah. years ago. Yeah, so, yeah, we start. Yeah. yeah, we started off like going into Quake and then like right. going into Unreal Tournament and yeah. then going into uh, Counter Strike. We actually had like a rich like Counter Strike history. A right. lot of our community used to yeah, like. Yeah, for some reason I associate you with Counter Strike for some reason. Yeah. We had like a big thing where uh, we used to do like shack battles like every week for Counter Strike Source right. and then uh, just like upload to like a YouTube account and, like that sort of thing. So yeah, we, th 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 that was a that was a part of us too more than. Not as much as like Quake or Unreal, but like we we definitely love our Counter Strike on yeah, the side. Yeah, well, well, congratulations! I mean, it looks really nice. We're here like well, here, here at E3, yeah. so much later. You know, I was like playing Counter Strike, looking at Shack News. I never thought I'd be here sitting on this nice couch <laughs> with you nice people talking well, about listen, E3. This isn't about us. This is about <laughs> <you>. <laughs> this, so, is this is turned around on us really quick. Uh, what your involvement was with the Shovel Knight project to become a worldwide phenomenon. Everybody loves Shovel Knight. I personally bought the game four or five times, so. Tell us your involvement. Well, me, me and Waz like made a lot of the game. Um, I, I did game design and direction and level design and yeah. overseeing things. I did some pixel art. Um, yeah, all and biz dev stuff. stuff. But Waz did like all that stuff too. Yeah. Um, Waz did all the pixel art. Um, I don't know. You want to talk yeah. about what you did? I do animation. I mean, and, and art. That's like, like my that's like my my main thing. But yeah, like if you see the art in Shovel Knight, you're seeing like most of the things that I do every day. So yeah. and I'd say you like you like directing like like how the overall visual style of the game and like how like even I mean, like we all, how we all take part. That's like a thing to be all yeah. Like, really. 
that's what's are. that's what's cool about Shovel Knight. I mean, there's there's only we started we were five people. Now we're 13 people. We're like this huge company, <laughs> but we still try to have that same maintain that same thing where everyone is able to collaborate. We're all ha trying to have trying to have a good time where everyone gets to put their say into it, and like we're all working towards the same goal though, of making something that's just like really fun and cool. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So Sh Shovel Knight one done. Plague of Shadows, finished. Yeah. Spectre Torment just came out. Yep. That's why we're not showing anything, really. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of people have been uh, have been working really hard to get something out for the Switch launch or for early this year, and now everyone's like, oh, like taking a breath. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so it's kind of a quiet year at E3 this year, just because it's I a think sigh of so, relief. Just yeah, take some time yeah, to enjoy yeah. the Switch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everyone's enjoying their Switch right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys were like one of the first Kickstarter success stories. I mean, back when Kickstarter was like just yeah. starting out, and yeah. one of the first. One of the first gaming projects was Shovel Knight. And one of the we, uh, you know, I, I feel like we started when the when the Kickstarter yeah. like. I think like the thing that the, the project that I remember us looking to a lot was uh, that the Tim Schafer project was like big at, at that time, yeah. um, and so was uh, Cryomore had just finished. That's what I was say, um, Delver's drop Delver's had also drop, done yes, well, Delver's so it and um, like I remember like talking to all these people as they were going. Cool. Yeah, and looks great. Yeah. Um, I think they're they're approaching beta or alpha. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we, I remember like like looking at all those. Like, oh man, I hope we do as, as good as these guys, and like I hope we like we can like be like you know contemporaries with all these 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 great Kickstarter projects. Um, it's been wild. Like, and then like I think during early in development is when Darkest Dungeon did their their Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was Red Hook, and, and so. Yeah, we're in good company. I know. There's, I, we definitely weren't the first. We had like at least there were at least like five or ten other big Kickstarter projects. That yeah, there we, was a period for like a couple of years when we were seeing like a Kickstarter every week. Like, yeah, it was huge. I mean, right after us was like Mighty Number no. 9 yeah. and, that, and that whole thing and it just like kept getting bigger and bigger. I, I guess it kind of culminated or the end was like last year when they did like yeah, Shenmue, started to 3, plateau after Shenmue a while. 3, Ukulele, like these big, big, huge projects, right? Now, like like we, have, we don't see as much of them anymore. Like I think we've so, kind of like stalled a little bit with, the, with crowdsourcing, but well, there, there was a little, definitely a boom there for a while. They're fewer and farther between, but I'd, I'd say they still they still do them. They're actually, you know, the uh, the new Parappa. Did you see that? There was a no. Kickstarter by, for the guys. It was like one guy that had worked on Parappa and another guy that had worked on some other music game, and they're like, and together we're gonna like make this Hold new game. But say what? Was it Toe Jam and Earl, Earl that you're thinking of? No, no, oh, no, no, no. It's it, it is literally a Parappa. It's like it's it's called. I don't know. It's like Johnny the Rapping Bunny or something, and it's like it's like very similar to Parappa. And they had it's like here's our new project, but they wow. had no they had no gameplay and they had no plan and it failed, even yeah. with the even with the Parappa name. Oh wow! So it's like it's it's not a. Uh, I think before it used to be that you could just put your name on there, and if you had some clout, then you would be able to get your project greenlit. But now people are a little bit more hesitant. Yeah, yeah. I just. I just played a game that I really like. I just finished like 100% completing it, um, uh, called Hollow Knight, and it, it came out. Yeah. Or the, the the Kickstarter ran in 2014, just after Shovel Knight was released, <laughs> and it came out I think earlier this year. So like there are still successes there, but it's it's still hard. It's it's not the it's just you know everybody just throws money at you anymore. It's you've got to actually kind of like I, I I don't know how to be a successful Kickstarter like at all. I don't think anybody does. You're just kind of like. Well, well, well I think I remember seeing like one of the first times I looked at your Kickstarter and you guys had a vision and you guys had like concept screenshots and that sort of thing of how you wanted Shovel Knight. You had an idea of uh, how you wanted to see this thing through if you got the money. And there's oh, there are some Kickstarters that don't necessarily do that. They just start with concept and don't yeah. go from there. But I wouldn't I wouldn't downplay how much luck was involved. Yeah. Um, we, we released a Kickstarter at a time when it was still okay for websites to post about Kickstarters. Right. Like af after Shovel Knight, there was sort of like a weird mer meritorium where like, you know, news websites wouldn't post right. Kickstarters anymore. Yeah. And there was also like, uh, Kickstarters hadn't really been featured on YouTube a whole bunch. And so like when we pursued and, and, and got a bunch of YouTubers to, to put uh, content out about Shovel Knight's Kickstarter, it was sort of kind of a new thing. And so like we came in at like this really nice point where it made sense for like the Kickstarter to succeed. But I think it's, there's like more working against the Kickstarter at this point. And so the things that could succeed are more like Shenmue 3, like the big giant AAA or like the, the bigger, like very heavy clout kind of the games that they're doing. Like, like, like uh, the new Wasteland that already, like right, they already like did it. They did a Kickstarter that was really successful. Now there was a new one 
and everyone just like if we did another Kickstarter, I, I think people would probably trust us enough probably. that 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 we they would they trust that we would make a good game <laughs> and that we could fund it, right? Like yeah. because we already hopefully have a track it's record scary, now. Though. Yeah, yeah. If it's not if it's not a good idea or if you really don't have it together, then I think it's pretty it's pretty easy for it to just kind of fall through the cracks and not get not get what eyes was, on it, right? What was the biggest challenge with developing Shovel Knight? Well, developing Shovel Knight. Yeah, I don't know, like like getting the, I think one of the things that we do with our team is to make everybody really, and, um, like, everybody has to really synergize in the ideas that come, that come forth. And so even back from the Kickstarter to the development, it was like, everything takes time because it takes everybody's eyes to make sure it's done. Um, and so everybody worked on those Kickstarter updates. Everybody worked on, like, the, the design of characters. Everybody worked on um, the, the gameplay. And so there was never a point where it was just like, um, everybody kind of does their thing and they come together. It's like everything takes time because we're always like always thinking about every aspect of it. I think so. I think like the hardest thing, um, even now for us, is like is figuring out a way to like streamline and get efficient work done in the context of like a big team that that like all has equal say. Um, yeah. I think that's like one of the bigger challenges that we faced. But like now that we have the resources to be able to take a long time on stuff. I'd say that's alleviated quite a bit. Definitely. When During the original Kickstarter, we were like up against a wall because we were running out of money. And it was <laughs> yeah. like, we couldn't, like right now, like now we just be like, oh, King Knight, it's not like coming out of the wall. Yeah, want? that, we'll that just wall was screw. hunger. <laughs> we'll yeah, we'll delay it six months or whatever, right? I mean, that'd be horrible. Not right? that you're terrible. delaying it no, six no, months, no, right? No, 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 <laughs> no, not that we, I mean, every time we say it's going to come out, every time we say something's going to come out, it usually comes out a couple of months later. So. Yeah. I don't sorry. know. We're bad with We're that. Sorry. That sorry. We did, but we did the same thing on the original Kickstarter. Yeah, and we run it. We ran out of money basically, so that was like a really big challenge too. Yeah, the last the last like six months, like, there was just no paychecks. It was just like live off of like borrowing money from your family, and like I was borrowing a car, and like yeah. everything was just pretty. Everybody was like working twenty four seven, killing ourselves just to make the game like come out. Yeah, um, it was that, crazy. So, in the, in terms of like the development, that was like a huge. Just, yeah. you know, crazy. just the, the practical challenges of living when we're trying <laughs> yeah. to make the game. That was like that yeah. was a really hard, but that's not a problem anymore. Now we have like an office yeah. space that's set up, and we can work regular hours. And, and yeah, and go can, home at seven. Right. <laughs> but so. but those, year, those first years that you came to E3 and events like E3 to show off the game, that must have been a lot of pressure like, on, on you guys. Yes. Well, I, I guess, so. I don't know. Like the first E3, I don't know if I felt extreme pressure because it was like, well, what else are we going to, like we have to. <laughs> like we have to go there's, here and show the game. I mean, there's no option, right? Like there's no like right. are we making the right decision it was just like we have to do this like yeah. let's just keep going right but there is a pressure of like i really really hope this succeeds <laughs> yeah yeah i don't, so, I don't just, know just it's a weird way to define it but just it's going like, in with your fingers crossed um yeah you know it's interesting because this this year you're going into e3 you know just mainly as fans but you know fans go in they 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 play what they play they enjoy what they play uh for us in the media and even and for uh rakib and other twitcher and youtubers they go in and they kind of do it, do it for review. But do you guys look at games from like a game developer perspective, looking at certain things for inspiration, like that sort of thing? Like, how do you approach games like at e at E three as a developer? Well, my first E three at my first E three, they showed Perfect Dark and <laughs> Conquer's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> so I've been going. So to, like that's like heavy inspiration. For I've been like going. Your to, well, I'm just saying, I've been going to E three for like 15 years. Now. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy to say. Um, yeah, and the first time I went, like we, like I bought passes off of eBay and printed them out. Like, like I was only 16 or whatever. Right? Yeah, I, snuck, I, I, I snuck into my first yeah, E3 yeah, too. So I, saw, I, I think in. they announced like they, they announced Final Fantasy 13 the first time right. when I was oh, here, oh which is like you know 2005. Right. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And it yeah. was uh, Advent Children was a big deal at that time. For, <laughs> so. Dude, Rakeem, Advent Children, man. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was excited to see those things because I love Final Fantasy 7. Um, but but now yeah. now looking at games. I definitely, I would never stand in line for, to play a game. Yeah. I, yeah. That's like, I don't, like, I don't want to do that yeah. any, anymore. We had, we had the opportunity to do that today. Like, we just... But I like, but I really like watching games. You know, I really like watching someone play a demo and seeing the experience that they're having playing the demo, right? Yeah. Because you can tell, like, just because you have a good game doesn't mean that it shows well in a demo. And, like, just because you have a good game doesn't mean you have a good demo. And just because you have a good demo doesn't mean you have a good game, right? Yep. So it's like, how does something that you play and you only get to play for five minutes like how is that? How is that on the show floor? To show yeah. something like Shovel Knight, it's, it, I think it works very well, right? Yeah. But in but for something like an RPG, like a Final Fantasy, it's like it's really hard to show in that short amount of time. There was 
you know, before we went on air, we were talking about uh, Beyond Oasis, and we were talking about like that kind of RPG that right. it doesn't really translate well to on the floor. Right. Like, it could, yeah. it but could it could be, be an amazing game. It could be an amazing game, right. but how do you show that off in like a five-minute window? Like, yeah. yeah, like two minutes of was talking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I think that's. I think from a from a developer perspective, watching the experience that players are having with the game is almost as interesting as whatever the game itself is. Like, um, and I think that's true. While yeah. we're showing off our own game as well, like you know when Waz and I are showing off Wait. Shovel Knight and watching people fall into the pits or, or or trying to explain to them how how to do some game mechanic, it's just a. It's a really. It's a very you learn a lot at a place like this about your own game and about everyone else's game. It's interesting, and it's also part of why streamers like Rakeeber have become more essential. Yeah, you know, I like to ask this question to developers a lot because it's a very open-ended question, you know. Many developers will argue that their game being uploaded to YouTube or Twitch will take sales away, but I find that indie developers are more like, no, we want YouTubers to play our game, so what is your take on, um, you know, just content creators <laughs> showcasing your game? I think I think we love it. I think the the thing that I think that would be detracting is if your game was like really heavy on story, and then you like give away spoils, you spoiling the the story, and then you know the enjoyment is sort of like already lived by somebody who's watching it. But I think in a game like Shovel Knight, where you just the, the joy of playing it is the thing that you want to do, that not being able to like you, you can't enjoy Shovel Knight watching it. You can enjoy a speedrun of it, and you can appreciate that. But um, you know having having the actual experience of touching the game and, and enjoying it. Uh, I think is like, like just seeing it, seeing someone, someone's reaction really positive, it means that you want to try it out yourself, and then that results in someone like going out there and buying it for themselves. All it does One is get people excited, times. right? Yeah. It just gets people excited about it, and so yeah. even if you're watching it, you're gonna want to play, like you want to play it anyway, and just seeing it more, I think just wants you to play it more. So, so yeah, we're seems, all for yeah, it. Yeah, we're for it. Totally. All right, so we're almost out of time here, but I can't let this opportunity slip by without going, going ahead and asking. What's the current status of the King Knight expansion? How's King Knight going? <laughs> okay, well, it's pretty far along. We've got the mechanics are in place. We're starting to work on like new relics. Uh, the level structure is going to be a little bit different, so we're working on that. Uh, the way that Spectre Knight and King Knight and Plague Knight and Shovel Knight all play is, you can imagine he's like a fourth. He's different than, than how all those guys are, but he has his own thing, right? It, it's interesting because you, you see like kind of like Flash of the character in all three of those, in those first three anyway, yeah. uh, in Shovel Knight and Plague Knight and in the and Inspector Knight. With King Knight, it's kind of different because King Knight, his defining character trait is that he's kind of a dandy. Yeah, so he's I'm super actually, goofy, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm wondering like how that's going to work as a campaign. We showed up a little bit of what his gameplay would look like in a tweet a while ago. So if you wanted to scour through our Twitter, you could see uh, what his actual gameplay is like close to. It's um, going to be way more, it's more, more wacky, right? It's, it's, it's more, definitely more wacky. It's lighthearted, and it's like that the personality of King Knight, we really wanted to come through. Yeah, like Shovel Knight was about like a simple mechanic that lets you learn about a level or a world and Plague Knight was about like that world being already known and so like you, you like learn about this character. And the, and the and characters then, are like that too, right? Like yeah. Shovel Knight is like very simple and like stalwart. Plague Knight is like kind of tricky and like a weirdo. Yes. His game, cam his campaign is like kind of weird. Yeah, and Spectre Knight was like effortless cool and, and that's like, that fits with this character, character too. He's like, a, he's a badass with a side. Yeah. Um, and so King Knight is going to be like, he's like goofy, goofy and, and weird he's and like... He's arrogant, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so, like, He'll cheat. Right? Yeah, he's a cheater. Yeah, and and he's like he just he doesn't care about anyone but himself, and like he wants to be he, like he wants to be aggrandized. So like the, we want to make that gameplay. I don't know. Think about like like I I feel like Wario is sort of similar, right? It's like ah. Wario's just like greedy and like wants. Yeah. It's like he just like wants to make you a billion dollars with his game company or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, yeah, so it's like <laughs> yeah, so it's like he's he's kind of a he's like kind of a hero that you. I don't know if I'd call I mean, him a hero. Is such a I don't, yeah, word. I don't know if I'd call him. I don't know if I'd call him a hero. I guess King Knight's sort of the same way, right? He's like the main character. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's we just want to have a lot of fun with it, and also give a send off to Shovel Knight because yeah. this is the last campaign. This you know, and battle mode will, will be like the last things that we do for Shovel Knight One. Yeah, so and, and then we'll just like I don't know. Like I don't want to bury it. But I, I'm just Shovel Knight on ice for a little bit. It's done you know? for a little bit. Just yeah, yeah and yeah, and we'll like do a new thing. But we want to make sure that King Knight is a fitting send off to all of Shovel Knight too. So. It's going to be good. Yeah, please look forward to it. Yep. All right, Nick Wozniak, Sean Velasco, thank you guys so much for talking. Yeah, thanks by. for having us. Thank it's been, you. It's been a pleasure. Hey man, it's been a and pleasure. Uh, we will be right hey, back here on Shack News. Us.